How are you guys doing? Are you excited? I am. I'm very hyper. You can't believe it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, why are we here? Let ask ourselves this question. Well, many of us are here because the companies where we work, the industries where we work, are being disrupted, and very often not just by technologies, but by the organizations and companies that probably did not exist just a few years ago. So it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. A major wave of disruption being driven by artificial intelligence, by robotics, uh, blockchain, you name it, going to hit an organization, a department, a line of business. So you may say, many of you say, oh, we're going to become a software company, right? We're not making gadgets anymore. So, well, great. However, it does not mean that uh, being a software company, you are immune from disruption, right? Many software companies try to uh, change their business model on the fly while flying 600 miles an hour. It's not easy. You may say, oh, we're going to build apps quickly. We've got Cloud Foundry. Well, it does not mean that ability of building apps quickly is going to give the organization something that uh, you can count on for years to come as a new revenue source. Some other of you may say, hey, um, we know the customers very well. We know all the lean startup, all of that, right? We, we're going to develop them needs. We're going to build killer apps. Well, that's great. However, it does not mean that you can continuously, every year, every app after app after app, nailing it and making sure that it's, it's actually killer apps. So is there anything that we can learn from the Cloud Foundry platform pioneers that went before us? And um, there are quite a lot of different platforms out there made uh, with Cloud Foundry. Uh, IBM Bluemix is one such a great platform. It's, it's, a, it's a great for many industries, right? It's not just uh, applies for one specific thing, right? It's very wide. But then we have platforms like Nexen being built at BNY Mellon, right? It's built for financial services specifically by a bank. So a um, lot of different variations. We also have uh, interesting platforms like GE Predix, uh, ties end to end, all the way from hardware and sensors. For the first time ever, you can build an app in a few hours that ties a sensor from a real hardware in a secure manner and have an app in your palm, right? A mobile app or app on the, on the web. Um, but let me ask you a question. If you are an app developer, would you like GE to start selling your app that you may have built over the few days or weeks very quickly and very cheaply and inexpensively and you just get there? Maybe you would. And um, that leads to a conclusion I would like to make here is that the disruptive force is not just the applications or technologies that are the trends, the artificial intelligence or blockchain or sharing coming or what have you. It's also multiplied by the thousands and sometimes millions of developers that very often you just simply cannot afford to employ directly to keep building, to innovate for you and keep building those killer apps that uh, your customers want and need, right? So um, uh, how will the app stores and those app platforms that we're uh, building here together will look in a few years from now? Well, we can just learn from uh, platforms like uh, app stores from Apple, from Google, the Play Market, and um, the one that's uh, very um, uh, B2B, no B2C related uh, app store from uh, the uh, Salesforce, from App Exchange. So we can make those conclusions. And how, how do we uh, know at Altoros about all of this? Why, uh, 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 why am I so confident about this? Uh, the reason why is because we've uh, been uh, helping some of the uh, greatest companies out there to digitize their revenue streams and figure out how they actually compete moving forward. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work on top of the Cloud Foundry platforms, uh, both the, the open source and those that are many of you are using great platforms with uh, amazing capabilities we're putting them to work. And um, uh, within the customers that we are working with, we've been very lucky to work with some of the market leaders uh, in the select industries. And I would like to show you some of the examples of the apps that uh, uh, the platforms that we're helping them build, which um, one will be this platform and an app store for DNA analysis in the cloud. DNA is a big file. 
And um, if you can put the apps like bees on top of the file, it's great, right? Um, another example is platform and app store for managed private cloud. Uh, we're working together with Verizon to build an end-to-end -end offering for managed service where you can choose data centers, you can choose compliance, you can choose network, you can choose interconnect to Azure, to AWS, and then you can have it all available to you as a service with uh, disaster recovery and, C uh, and CLA um, and SLA guarantees. So, um, but I'm here to ask you for a favor. Everything might be great in where you work, but I would like to ask you for something. Cloud Foundry is also a technology, and uh, like, just like everything else, no exception, it's subject to disruption. So under great leadership of Sam Ramji, we, uh, we've been very lucky to have him as a leader of the Cloud Foundry uh, uh, community. Um, we have a mission to make Cloud Foundry the platform of choice for application development uh, worldwide. And I would like to ask you to help uh, us at Altoros to do a few things that we can to help push this whole thing forward and um, have a greater chance of fulfilling the mission. One, we can incentivize industry specific contributions of our members. We can call for smaller companies, bigger companies, to bring contributions that are related to specific industries. Next, we can widen the workload support. It's so great to see uh, new type of workloads becoming first class citizens on Call Foundry, like TCP uh, support that GE has worked on, like UDP. Uh, you will see, you will hear in a few minutes about that. Um, we need more of that. Th th third, we can standardize some of the workloads in some of the industries to become standard and, and uh, across the whole industries, like, like utility metering. When you, when, you, uh, when, you, when you get a bill right for your electric, uh, these, these formats of, of data that flies in, how much, who consumed, it's not been standardized. Only a few states have been standardizing. We can help standardize that. Um, and finally, uh, please help us to uh, work hard to make sure that Cloud Foundry becomes the standard, de facto standard, for smart cities in Industry 4.0, for all the national and global initiatives out there that could put Cloud Foundry on a completely different level when it comes to adoption by those who may not even care what's inside. And um, um, uh, why we do all of that? Because together, as a community, we're very strong. And uh, a rising tide can lift all boats. At the end, we all benefit, as long as we all work together to fulfill the mission. And last but not least, I would like to, uh, I'm very happy to make an announcement uh, that today, Altoros uh, launches the on-demand Cloud Foundry training, which any of you can go in and uh, apply for better access. Uh, the link is out there, cf-training.altoros.com, especially those of you who today could not get in into the training because uh, we've seen so many people that couldn't because it was completely sold out. So with that, I would like to thank you and wish you a great show.